Are your 3.5 liter EcoBoost VCT phasers rattling? If so, stick with me to learn everything that you need to know about this issue. requested videos I think I've I've come across hell I don't know what I'm saying what's going on YouTube my name is Mason I'm a senior master technician with Ford and if you're new here to the channel make sure that you go hit that red subscribe button so that you can find your way back to the channel if you enjoy the content today make sure that you go smash that like button for me and if you don't enjoy the content today and you think i am a complete idiot then let me know down in the comment section so today we are talking finally about the 3.5 liter ecoboost vct phaser rattle i have had more requests for this video than anything else um, we are finally getting to it Today we are going to be talking about not only VCT phasers, but specifically the rattle that is happening on these 3.5 liter EcoBoost. I made a video a while back. Um, it wasn't just about 3.5s, it was about the 5.0s and the 3.5s. If you want to go check it out, it'll be somewhere up here. In that video, I broke open some VCT phasers. I talked about what fails on them, what happens, how to fix them, how much it costs. So go check that video out. When we talk about the 3.5 liter EcoBoost, the first thing that came to mind is I want to differentiate between uh, the early build. Well, I guess there's actually, there's been, a, there's been a lot of modifications over the years, but they started producing 3.5 liter EcoBoost in 2011, I believe. And they went to um, another style and then they changed it again. And I want to say 2017, they changed the 3.5 liter again. So this video is going to be directed pretty much at the 17, 18, and 19 3.5. Those are the ones that have the most issues with this VCT phaser rattle. But I want to go ahead and differentiate between the two. Old ones have this problem. They have the problem, but it's not as common as it is on the newer ones. It's almost the same VCT. They look identical. I don't know if they're the same part number or not, but on the old ones, uh, they would only start really developing a rattle usually around 150 plus 150,000 plus miles and a lot of the time by that point you had had poor maintenance and you had a lot of gunk in the engine and that was a, a common cause for what we thought was VCT phaser rattle. All right on the 17, 18s and 19s these trucks are rattling with 40,000 miles on them. I mean, they're brand new. People change their oil every 3,000 miles and they're still rattling. Pretty much does not matter what you do, they're going to rattle. So that is what this video is going to be directed at. Not saying that that does not apply to the previous year models. Couldn't make this video without mentioning uh, the technical service bulletin and the field service action or recall Ford has put out about this problem. So the TSB number is 21-2119. That is the technical service bulletin number for this video. VCT phaser rattle that has evolved into the field service action 21B10. That is a field service action or recall. Uh, the difference between a technical service bulletin is a technical service bulletin is put out just for me. I'm the only person that's going to hear about it or see it. And a field service action is the thing that you get whenever you have a recall on your vehicle. Uh, Ford's going to mail it to you. You're, um, you're going to have that attached to your VIN for the life of the vehicle until that recall is completed. That is the difference between a TSB and an FSA. On this, they started out with a technical service bulletin, but it eventually evolved into this recall, this field service action 21B10. The field service action, uh, we started doing them a couple, I think in March is when it came out and we started doing them. And then shortly thereafter, Ford said stop doing the field service action, which the field service action was actually to update the PCM strategy. We were reprogramming or reflashing the PCM to try to correct this cam phaser issue. Uh, Ford come out and said, stop doing it because something is possibly wrong with the new file, the new PCM file strategy, whatever you want to call it. Something was wrong with it, so they had to stop doing it because it was causing transmission shutter in some of the trucks. So we have stopped doing that recall until further notice. I don't really know when that's going to be. I don't know when they're going to get that fixed and we might start doing it again. But what I can tell you is that the technical service bulletin 
prior to this was to replace the VCT phaser unit and this field service action was to update the PCM strategy. On this PCM uh, strategy update, I'm just gonna be flat out honest with you guys. It, it's not fixing a single one of these trucks. I have not personally seen one that had VCT phaser rattle update the PCM and it didn't have VCT phaser rattle. Every single time it's the same thing. The PCM program is not fixing these trucks. Maybe some people have gotten them fixed with it, but I have not personally had that experience. Uh, so there's that FSA, the FSA 21B10, and then there's actually another uh, field service action or recall that extends the warranty out. This number is 21N03. That is the FSA number uh, for these VCT phaser rattles. And uh, it only applies to certain year models. It does not apply to the high output engine. I'm, I'm pretty sure it doesn't apply to that. And it's, there's also other some other weird things there where this only applies to some. So this may not apply to yours, even if you're having the issue. But this 21N03 FSA, what it does is it extends the warranty coverage out for the repair of these VCT units and how they've done this is they cover 100% up to 69,999 miles. From there up to 80,000 miles, it is 66% uh, coverage. And from 80,000 up to 90,000, it is a 33% coverage. And then from 90,000 up, it's all on you. It's all coming out your bank account after that. So if any of you are anything like me, you don't just wanna know what is the problem with the rattle. We know it's the VCT phasers causing the rattle. We know that for a fact. What I like to know is what is actually causing the VCT phaser to make that noise. What part, what part of it is rattling? What part is making, causing it to make that noise? I have done my very best to try to figure that out but I've come up empty. I cannot find anything online about a particular part in it. I've taken these VCT phasers apart, which is really almost impossible in these three fives because they're not really made to come apart. I cannot find anything inside of the VCT phaser that I think would be causing this rattle. So I'm just gonna tell you guys my theory, philosophy, whatever you wanna say on it. Obviously we know that these VCT phasers work off oil pressure. If they don't have oil pressure, they're gonna make noise, they're gonna bounce around, they're gonna do all kind of crazy stuff. So my theory on what is actually causing these VCT phasers to rattle is that they're bleeding off oil pressure. I think, because if any of you have these trucks, you know that the only time that it rattles is when it's cold. It's when it's sat for five, six, seven, 12, 24 hours. It's sat for a long period of time, which means the oil has drained back down into the engine, most likely out of the camshaft journals, maybe out of the VCT. And there's just not something inside the VCT phaser that can correct that until oil pressure is brought back up through the engine, cylinder head, camshaft, and into the phaser. Uh, that's my theory. I think it's something to do with the fact that it's just not getting oil pressure into that VCT phaser on a cold startup. So the, probably the number one question that I've gotten about these VCT phasers is actually not something that I've thought about a whole lot until I had a lot of you guys asking me about it. It's, are these new VCT units updated? Are they, is there something different about the new ones as opposed to the old ones um, to correct that rattle problem on them? And for a while there, I didn't exactly know the answer to it. And the reason I didn't know the answer is me as a technician, I don't actually really pay a whole lot of attention into the parts that I'm installing. I just know that whenever something tears up, I'm going to get OEM parts out of our parts department. And I'm installing it on the vehicle no matter what. So it doesn't really matter to me if they updated it or not. I'll, if they didn't update it, then I'll see it in another 30 or 40, 50,000 miles and I'll do it again. Uh, it doesn't really matter to me, but I've done a little bit of investigating into this. And what I found is that they have actually updated the VCT phasers. I'm not sure exactly what date they did this, but how I figured this out was I actually checked the engineering number off of a old VCT phaser as compared to a new VCT phaser. I actually have one of the old ones right here with me. And uh, if you ever looked at one of them, there's actually an engineering number right here on the bottom. I don't know if that's going to focus, but there is an engineering number right here on the bottom. And what I did was I just basically compared the engineering number from the old one to the new one. And it does have a new engineering number. I'm not sure what they changed. I cannot find anything online. I have not, um, you know, talked with the engineers who made this to know what they changed about this VCT phaser uh, so that it does something different. But I will say that if you're replacing your VCT phasers, 
I would highly, highly recommend going back with a Ford VCT phaser. Even if you don't have faith in them, I promise you this phaser has better quality than what you're going to buy at your local parts store. Whatever aftermarket brand that you're going to buy, this has a better quality, I promise you. Okay, so for you guys that are out of warranty, you're 100% sure that you are out of warranty. So I want to talk to you guys separate. The ones of you that are in warranty or you're right there at the, uh, the mark there for um, being in warranty for this repair, if something happens and warranty, basically if you take it to your dealer and they tell you that it's not under warranty and you're like right there at the cutoff, I would highly, highly recommend talking with somebody from Ford, especially before you get all pissed off and go buy a Chevrolet. Just call Ford's, um, I don't even know what they're called, the Ford, uh, Ford hotline for customer satisfaction. I don't know. It's a Ford number. Just call Ford corporate. Talk with those people. Tell them your situation. Tell them how you're frustrated and talk to them. And a lot of the time, um, they will make it right. They will help you out in any way they can. They're, they're really friendly over there most of the time. So I would highly recommend just calling them and talking to them before you just go out and spend a bunch of money repairing this on your own, especially if you're right there close to warranty. That's the best piece of advice I'm probably gonna give you in this whole video, is before you spend $3,000 repairing this out of your pocket, call Ford, talk to them, just tell them what's going on and they probably will do their best to help you. So for those of you that are out of warranty, you have 105,000 miles, Ford's not paying for this repair, uh, what do you do? Uh, basically, you're gonna have to come out of pocket, but the question then becomes, what all should you replace? Because under warranty, the only thing Ford is going to pay to replace are the VCT phasers and any one-time use parts, such as gaskets, they're gonna pay for silicone, uh, any bolts that need to re be replaced, any torque to yield bolts that need to be replaced. That is the only thing that Ford is going to pay for. They're not going to pay to replace your timing chains, even though you maybe should while you're in there, they're not going to pay for that because you know they're not, they're not doing maintenance on your vehicle. They're replacing the one failed part um, that is on them to be under warranty and that's all they're gonna replace. But you under customer pay, you already got somebody tearing the whole thing apart. Uh, what all should you replace? And, and me personally, if I owned one of these trucks and I was doing it for myself, I would replace pretty much everything to do with the timing. Uh, a lot of people might disagree with me on this, but why I'm in there, I'm replacing the VCT units. I'm going to replace the timing chains. I'm going to replace the timing chain tensioners. I'm going to replace the timing chain guides because these are all parts that wear out. They're moving parts. They're going to wear out. So if I already have 100,000 miles on them, why wouldn't I replace them? Why I have the front cover off the engine? Because that's a lot of labor involved in taking all that apart. Why even chance it? Why not just go and replace, spend the extra five or six hundred dollars that it would probably cost for all those parts why not replace them while i'm in there so i would highly recommend for you guys that are having this done under customer pay to um customer pay i sound like a you know a dealer employee on it you guys that are coming out of pocket to repair your vehicles you should really really think about going ahead and replacing the time and chain tensioner guides also while you're in there i would especially if you have close to 100,000, i would be replacing spark plugs and I'd be putting a water pump on these things because, you know, water pumps is just something that they'll leave you on the side of the road in a heartbeat. And I personally believe if I'm going to take it off, I'm going to put a new one on it. Just don't make no sense to put the old 100,000 mile water pump back on. But that's pretty much it that I would replace. I wouldn't go way, way overboard, you know, just replacing oil pump and stuff like that. I mean, like your oil pump's fine. It's, it's going to last you a long time. It's, your oil pump don't need to really be replaced at 100, 150,000 miles. It's just, it has a lot of life left in it. So I would just replace the timing chain, timing chain guide, timing chain tensioners, uh, obviously all the gasket seals and bolts that need to be replaced. I would also replace the water pump at the same time. Uh, other than that though, I probably wouldn't mess with anything else. There's just no reason to at that low of a mileage because those things usually last a long time, a lot of the other things. The big question that probably most of you have been asking this whole video, if I'm having to pay for this repair, how much does it cost? And it's gonna vary a lot depending on your area, depending on 
you know, who you have working on. Did you take it to the dealer? Did you take it to somebody that charges $60 or $70 an hour to repair it? In most cases, I found that you're not going to get out of this repair for less than about $2,500. $2,500 is about the lowest you're going to find somebody to repair this for you. If you're doing other things, like, like I said, spark plug, water pump, uh, that's going to push it on up closer to $3,000. Uh, in some places, you might even find yourself paying $3,500, even closer to $4,000, just depending on the labor rate, the, uh, the rate which that shop is going to charge you. It's all going to vary based on your area. It's not going to cost the same for somebody that lives in Los Angeles as it is down here in you know Podunk, Alabama, where I live. Uh, the prices there are going to be a lot different. I will say, though, I have quoted this up for a few... Uh, a lot of people here lately actually that are were out of warranty and wanted me to do this repair and i found that about an average of two thousand nine hundred dollars twenty nine hundred bucks is about an average of what it was costing so i've had a lot of people whenever they were asking me to do the vct phase repair uh, asked me if they should just go ahead and install a milling high volume oil pump it's not a bad idea um, i'm not by any means saying that it's a bad idea it's just a lot more money and a lot of people don't think about it even if you can get that old pump i think it's the old pump i mean it's it's i believe i want to say it's less than 500 dollars for the oil pump uh, if you bought that oil pump getting it installed even though you have the front cover off it's still a very very uh, time consuming task to replace that oil pump because you still have to drop the oil pan out of it which on a four wheel drive vehicle means you have to take the front chunk out of it to get the oil pan off of it if you wanted to you could if you were comfortable spending the extra money but me personally especially on a daily driver that i wasn't hot riding and doing all kind of crazy stuff in i would for sure not uh, spend just waste that money on something that i didn't need in the first place because you don't need a high volume oil pump in this engine you don't need that in there uh, the factory one does perfectly fine but if you wanted to spend the money uh, i would say around you know by the time you bought the part you're probably looking at an extra thousand dollars worth of labor i know i quoted one for a guy here a while back hopefully maybe he's watching this video i don't know he's from uh, auburn alabama I quoted his and i think it added about twelve hundred dollars worth of extra labor on it because he wanted the oil pump i actually changed my mind about how i wanted to repair it i was just going to pull the engine out set it on a stand and that way i was for certain that i could do the repair the right way on the vcts and i could make sure i was installing that melon high volume oil pump in uh, the right way and make sure everything was right before I set the engine back in the truck and got him going again. So that's my opinion on that milling high volume oil pump. All right, so that's pretty much going to wrap this one up. Uh, not a whole lot with this VCT phaser rattle on the 3.5 EcoBoost. I just wanted to add in some things from my previous video. If you haven't already went and watched that, I would really recommend watching it before you tell. I, I mean, I, I guess we're at the end of the video now. If you're watching this, then um, hopefully you watched the first video because I went a lot more in depth about some things on them in that first video. That shit the same color my ass up. That's going on the YouTube video. <laughs> pretty much gonna wrap this one up i hope you guys really enjoyed this video uh if you did enjoy it i'd really love if you'd go down there and smash that like button like i told you to do in the beginning hopefully you listen to me then um you know don't go smash it again because i think then it's gonna turn it off don't do that but i really appreciate you guys watching and i will catch y'all in the next one peace out